Hello, hosts and travelers. Welcome to the podcast, Hosting Your Home. Each day around the world, millions of guests stay in other people's homes using the Airbnb platform. Debbie Herdert looks for stories that come from these connections to share them with you. Listen in as we hear stories that teach us the human side of hosting your home. I was downtown at the Portland Airbnb headquarters for a meeting and decided to Uber home. So I got on the app and requested an Uber and this nice lady came and picked me up to drive me home. And on the way we talked about all things Airbnb and all things Uber and we found that we had some other things in common too. She was getting ready to retire and had been toying with the idea of putting her extra bedroom on Airbnb. And a week or so later, she joined our meetup group called HomeShare PDX. And just as a little aside here, we have a number of meetup groups in Portland now. One is the meetup.com group, the HomeShare PDX. And we have created a Facebook support group called Portland Area Airbnb Hosts. And then you may also know that Hosting Your Home also has a uh, Facebook page and a closed Facebook group. Anne is a charming lady, and not too long ago, I went to her home to walk through it with her and talk to her about her operations of getting it ready for Airbnb, what she needs to do, some of the renovations that she's needing to do, uh, how to list it, and just, you know, some of the basics about preparing. So that's what this interview is all about. I hope you enjoy the conversation and we'll chat a little bit afterwards. Well, in the home of Anne Sigler. Correct. And it's a lovely little home and we'll just do a little walkthrough and then okay. we'll sit down and have a little chat. And I'd like to tell people that I met you because you picked me up at the Airbnb offices downtown and when I called an Uber and took me home. Yes. And so and then we started talking about Airbnb and poof here we are. Yes, definitely. <laughs> so that's very cool. I love these connections. Right, how um, true. So you were working at in you were still working at that time. I was, yes. And uh, now you're not mm-hmm. and you are still driving for Uber. Yes. And now you're considering opening your own Airbnb. Yes. How totally cool. Yeah, really. Yeah. Kind of crazy. Yeah. So many things go through my mind yeah. when I was thinking of the retirement and what I could do after I retire. And and so I've always had my home open to summer interns. Mm-hmm. This year I didn't get one to rent from me, but... Um, so Intel I, interns. Yes. Okay. So um, I thought, why not do the Airbnb? This is the... Kitchen and cute, nook, I guess is cute. what you would call it. I have a family room in here. Oh, nice big family room. Yes. Okay. That's comfortable. So, Very comfortable. Yeah. I like it. Nice. This is supposed to be the dining room, but mm-hmm. there's no way you can put mm-hmm. anything into it for mm-hmm. a dining room. So. Well, so you have a little kitchen nook, so yeah. you don't eating nook in the kitchen, so you don't really need it. Of course, the living room. Uh-huh. And... Uh, I want to, I want to do both bedrooms as Airbnb, but I don't really know if I'll be able to get this one to that point. This is I toss everything in here type stuff, uh-huh. and the closet's full and all of that. Okay. I don't know if a single bed would be sometimes, good for, sometimes. Sometimes, yeah, especially if you will look in the other room. But do you have a queen in there? Yes, I do. Okay, so a lot of people will travel with their kids. And mm-hmm. if you did, is that a trundle bed? No, it's just a regular. But um, that might be a thought is yeah. to take out the dresser or move the dresser and, you know, and put in a trundle so that you could have two kids. Right. Um, we'll, we'll talk about what you want as far as your space. So if there's kids in your home and you're not comfortable with that, then, yeah. you know, there, there's there's that element too. Right. So um, Kids don't bother me. Okay, great. Well, it, <laughs> it seems like they're not very, tearing the place up. It feels know. very family friendly yeah. already. Yeah. Uh, this is the guest bathroom that's got the leak problem. Okay. And, of course, the insurance company came back this morning and said, we have two incidents. We'll cover one. Uh, the other one just meets your deductible, so I have to meet 
two deductibles. So oh, dear. <laughs> so anyhow, I'm waiting to hear back from Service Pro or Service Master, whoever it is, mm-hmm. um, because they found mold on the other side here, which means they're going to have to contain all of that, get it out of here, yes. and do the repairs and all of that stuff. So it'll be a safe bathroom yes. once that's all done. Yes. So, And this is the other room with the queen bed. Beautiful. And, um, of course, I was thinking, well, I'll put different curtains up. I'll you know, make some changes. But for right now, this is the closet's empty. The dresser is empty. You know, it's... Yeah, you're ready to go, really. Ready to go with that. And I don't know that you would need to have... I mean, you've got blinds on the, on the window, so mm-hmm. you don't really have to... Um, change your window dressing if you don't want to. Right. One of the things that people will, will want is a place to put their suitcase. So if you have, if your clo- you said your closet is empty? Yes, the closets are empty, this one. Oh, that's perfect this right side, there. And this side is the uh-huh. smaller one. I was going to suggest a luggage rack, but with the shelves in the closet, you don't even need that. Yeah, so anyhow... Mm-hmm. And there's extra bedding up there. Yeah, a couple could be very, very comfortable in here. You would want to have um, bedside tables with lamps. Uh, That's kind of a big thing, especially if anybody wants to, well, you're going to be charging their their phones Mm -hmm. and reading in bed. Um, Maybe have a CPAP, you know. I have (laughs) friends who have CPAPs. And this is, right here is where the... Um, where the outlet is. Okay. So that's so another they, thing is, is extension cords or multiple right. strips. So they can do stuff yeah. with that. Yeah, because there, there's no TV in here. That's a You could, but I you could don't a have TV. to. Yeah. Um, I thought about moving the small TV here into here. Mm-hmm. And what I've done in my room, because I don't have cable, uh-huh. but they're all uh, HD TVs. Mm-hmm. So... And this just looks lovely going over, but there, there is a antenna here, and they can get um, all of the local channels oh, and stuff okay. with with that. Uh-huh. So that's so you you have a roof antenna? No, just these HD. The TVs. kind that you put on the window that yeah. just okay yeah you can get those from Costco for like thirty five dollars yeah one of those too yeah this is uh-huh. actually I got it from uh, Amazon okay and. About ten dollars. Oh well. <laughs> yeah, and they pay for the shipping. <laughs> so, anyhow, um, one in the family room sits uh, on the wall. Uh huh. So anyhow. Okay. So. And so this is my room, which I would put a lock on, so mm-hmm. people weren't able to get into it. Yeah. You know. There would be no reason for them to be in my right. private space. Right, and you would also want to have a lock for them on their rooms. Okay. So that their things, can, can they can feel up. safe with yeah. that, yeah. Um, you know, things like their computers. Because, like I was going to say, is that you don't, you don't have to offer a, a TV in there. Right. Because a lot of people will travel with their own devices, and they'll have their iPads and, and their, their laptops, and they'll just, you know, plug them in and watch Netflix and Hulu. There. Oh, must be the radio. <laughs> Maybe I'll put this on pause and we can turn that off. Okay. Well, now, would your guests have access to the outside area? Yes, they, they could use the outside area. Uh, outside area. Oh, what a pretty yard! Yeah. Oh, this is look at all your petunias and lobelia. There's daylilies. Yeah. This is the uh, heather. This must be beautiful when it's blooming. Oh yes. That's a lot that of heather. Great. Oh, yeah. I do have a pond over here, mm-hmm. and it's got a leak someplace because it goes down into the dry riverbed. So they thought they had found it, and they haven't. So once that's running, then you hear my waterfall and the neighbor's waterfall. Uh-huh. Oh, this is, I love the gazebo out there, too. And yeah. I guess that's not a gazebo. What is that called? Pergola? Pergola, yeah. Pergola, I think is what it is. Man, so. what kind of roses are those? Those are you know, gorgeous. They're, they are pretty. And they've been, it was the for, first rose bush that we had here. And it, it's like an American Beauty or something. That is really pretty. So, and it's just fun. Yeah. Yeah, so you're talking about 
two to four people for uh, as far as guests are concerned. Right. And it is very comfortable, I think. When you have guests, would you stay here? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, unless I'm traveling or something, then I mm-hmm. wouldn't, you know, be here. But um, my friend goes, oh, by the way, I do have Wi-Fi in the house. Oh, good, good. Can we just sit at the table? Is that we all right? can, yes. Would you like some iced tea or ice? So we had a nice little walk around the property, and uh, you have the queen-size bed in the one bedroom that looks like it's ready to go, and you have the smaller bedroom that you may or may not offer. Right. You know, what you might want to do is just do one at a time. Just do one. Uh-huh. See how that goes for you. Since you you haven't done this before, then that might be a good intro. And if that feels good, and you feel like this is a good fit for you, then open up the other bedroom. Okay, which gives me time to decide what to do with yeah, all of that. Yeah, right, right, right. Make it easy for yourself. True. And with the bathroom um, being out of commission the way it is, what do you? What kind of timeline do you think you've got there? Well, um, I mean, the all the folks that have, have to come in, the project planner with... Um, Service Pro, I think it is, will, you know, help get a contractor. They'll let me know how long it will take. I'm waiting for the estimate. How long it will take to get all these pieces taken mm-hmm. care of. Yeah. And um, so it'll be probably around three to $5,000. And it's not going to be a total gut of the bathroom, is it? Not that I... I don't believe so, not okay. right now. Okay. Because... They're just saying the floor and then the wall in the living room where the bathroom faucet has leaked Mm -hmm. through the wall Mm -hmm. and caused the damage (laughs) that I found, you know, just about a month ago. So hopefully it will all be completed before September. Mm -hmm. That's my hope. (laughs) So September then is your timeline to go live on Airbnb? I, yes, I'm hoping so. Okay. That should give me time to figure out the insurance part of it. Also, I've called Washington County and I didn't get very far uh, to figure out, you know, any of the, you know, paperwork I have to have for them. Mm -hmm. They told me, well, you'll have to call Oregon for a business license. We don't do that. No, no. So, but, but the... You're in Beaverton. No, I'm in Washington. You're County. in Washington County. So mm-hmm. the county should have some kind of regulation about whether or not you charge occupancy tax and how much that is. Okay. And then you can go online to the state of Oregon and you can get your um, your business name. You don't have to have a license. You can register your business without having... A license okay it's about fifty dollars and you can do it all online you can pay it online and everything and then um, Washington County and the state will have applications for you to fill out to in order to pay your occupancy tax that should okay. be it okay so in one of our meetings that we had they said that Airbnb pays the occupancy tax they do okay that's true they do However, you're not in Portland. Right. So Airbnb probably will not pay your county tax. Okay. They will pay your state tax. Okay. I'd still go ahead and do that registration, get that paperwork done, because that covers you all the way through. Right. How true. We don't want to be, be illegal That's in right. any respect. That's right. So. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And you've got room for a, a car here to park next to yours. Correct. Um and well, do you also have on street parking where people yes. could? Okay. Yeah, it's just that uh, the car that's out there right now. He works for the gentleman that is behind me, and okay. so just during the week, he usually has his car parked there, or the, whenever mm-hmm. they're working. So, but if you just have one bedroom, you're not going to get more than one car anyway. No, so that's going to be, be. So let's talk a little bit about where you are located and the the desirability of your neighborhood. Okay, so I'm located in outside of Beaverton and Hillsboro. I'm kind of in between Beaverton and Hillsboro uh-huh. in Aloha. Uh-huh. 
even though I use Beaverton address. Um, could you use either one? I could use Beaverton okay. or Loa. Okay. It I was just matter. curious about yeah. that. Um, in zip code, they still say it's Beaverton. So. Okay. <laughs> so anyhow. Um, and I am, uh, there's bus lines out on 198th. So that's okay. not a problem. It's like a quarter of a mile down this way, isn't it? Yes. It's an easy walk. Mm-hmm. And it's a regular bus line, so it runs up until, I think, midnight or something like that. Mm-hmm. So so anyhow, I'm very close to the bus line, which they can get on and go to Max to get into Portland or go to Hillsboro. Now, and you just retired? I did, yes. From Intel? You are an executive at Intel? No, I was um, non technical employee okay so congratulations thank you (laughs) it's been very nice and so when you worked at intel did you did you drive yourself or i did yes okay and so that's about a 15 minute drive about a 20 minute 20 minute to jones farm which is the furthest one out the good thing here yes is i do uber and if they needed a ride we could do the Uber thing. <laughs> now, that is a really, really good thing to bring up and something that I did want to introduce in this conversation. Yeah. And with your connections with Intel, is there is there um, a bulletin board or something that you would have access to that you could list your room? Uh, very possibly. I know they have a um, some kind of a newsletter or a, I never have used it, so... Mm-hmm. <laughs> So there is some kind of connection where you can go on and uh, post information. And I can find out that information. That might be very helpful to you to do that. Right. The other thing that I was going to suggest is that Airbnb now has um, a business category. And what that requires is that well, there's a number of criteria that you need to meet in order to be a part of this. And basically what it means is that you have, with your listing, you just have a little suitcase icon and mm-hmm. it's something that's searchable by the guests. So someone who wants to maybe come, you know, work at Intel, would have, the things that you would have to do is one, have high speed internet mm-hmm. and the guests would need to be able to have 24 access in and out. Now you share one door here, so they don't have, they wouldn't have a separate entrance no. But if you if you had a keypad on there, right, and you didn't mind them coming in and out whenever they and that, wanted to, that then, is the plan. Okay, then that would be the other a good thing. And then the other thing is no pets. Ooh, yes, I have my cat. <laughs> yes, so that actually you know probably would not make you eligible. Sure. In your listing heading, that you're close to Intel, right? And so if you can't have the business um, icon then you can, you know, at least make sure that people can see that right away. Right. And when it gets, when we get around to doing the listing part of it, actually getting you online, I'll help you with that. Okay, good. And so that we can talk about the dialogue and all the different things that you would want to do to set up your listing, the kinds of pictures that you would want, et cetera. Yeah, I made all, I have a notebook with all my lists and things to do. Right. Have you taken any pictures yet? No, I have not. Okay. I'd like to shoot a couple just with my cell phone before I leave for the podcast. And if you have people here who are more into just visiting family and having fun, how far are you from the beach? It's an hour drive. Because a lot of the people that I have stay in our place, and I think I, I have heard this from Many of the people in our meetup group and our Facebook group are people coming into town to visit grandkids, you know, mm-hmm. to be there when new babies are being born, to, you know, just interact with family or go to, go to, um, we had some people come for a tennis match, you know, yeah. or just hang out, you know, because Portland is now a destination. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. You know? And you know that because you drive around all over the place. Yes. <laughs> And I, it's just like, people come here. I love the one gentleman that said to me one day that they came for a beer-cation. I go, a That's beer? A oh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they came to try on all the different uh, uh, microbrew places. Uh-huh. And we've gotten, to, we're known as a foodie town also. Yeah, yeah. So it's just amazing that, yeah. you know, Portland? <laughs> 
<laughs> so you will be learning a lot more about that too with your new job. So yes. tell us about the new job and congratulations. Oh, thank you. So it's um, when you retire from Intel, you have the opportunity to work for a nonprofit organization for a thousand hours and Intel pays you a stipend to do so. So um, I will be the executive director for the Beaverton Downtown Association, which is part of the Main Street organization or group throughout the nation, where they're revitalizing the old towns, the old Main Streets, making it more livable, you know, taking away from, you know, a lot of these places have just been run down and there's drug houses and stuff like that. Yeah. So, I'm not saying this is Beaverton, but you know, across yeah, cause I don't, the country. Beaverton, but downtown Beaverton looks pretty nice. Yes, and they've made some improvements. I think he said the organization started in 2011 or 2012, mm -hmm. sometime around there. So they have made some really good improvements on Broadway downtown. Mm -hmm. And just more or less getting the organization going, finding out more ways to get funding, quarterly meetings that I'll be going to, but there's also a national convention also. Oh, my goodness. So it, it's a big deal. Yeah, it is. It's rather exciting. Oh. You know, so, yeah. And to really get to, since I've lived here all of my life, except for the 10 years that my then husband was in the Navy, I've lived here all my life. And I haven't really done much downtown Beaverton mm -hmm. in the old town. But they are just really spiffing it up. Well, so let's bring this back to you again. Mm -hmm. um, what's happening with your insurance? Well, first I want to ask you, how long have you been in this house? It'll be 36 years in November. Oh, wow. So you know this area really well. Yes. Good. Okay. <laughs> so then we, we kind of touched on this earlier. We talked about the insurance for your Airbnb. Right. Can you just expand on that a little bit? Okay, when I called my insurance company to find out and to ask questions, and I gave them all the information on, you know, Airbnb provides the liability policy. They also provide a policy for damage or theft for the owner. And my insurance company discussed it. I was on the phone for over an hour with them, discussed it. And then they came back and said to me, well, it's too high of a risk for us to take. I'm going... Airbnb has insurance. Why is it too high of a risk? Well, it's just too high of a risk for us. What's the company? MetLife. MetLife. Yeah. And it's a, it was a group policy through Intel. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that makes a difference. They gave me a phone number of somebody else to talk to as like a broker for Metropolitan Life. And she hasn't gotten back to me. And then um, I haven't had a chance. You sent me some information to call and get information from those insurance companies the cost American American life I life, think it was, I think it was yeah. too. but some other people have have insurance with yeah them. I'll put that in the show notes but yeah so insurance is a big deal it is and yes. you do need to have extra insurance including what Airbnb offers mm -hmm. and their insurance mm -hmm. policy so yeah. yeah and to my knowledge other than Airbnb, there is no insurance that will cover theft. So you it's the liability that you're looking for? Uh, and damages. Yes, and damages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, because, like, I have a $1,000 deductible. If somebody did damage to my house, I would have to pay the first $1,000. That's right. You know, and is that where Airbnb insurance would come in? Right, and uh, and there's people too, especially single women. I wanted to ask you this question as well, um, that are not comfortable having um, men guests. Mm -hmm. Are you? Do you intend to have both sexes as your guests when you get around to this? And so I'm just asking oh, you if that's okay. one of the things that you. Oh, I see. No, are, that doesn't bother me. Okay, good. That doesn't bother me. So. I'm a big girl. I can that, bite them off. Not only that, but he, <laughs> and here you are too with a, a very very positive looking business listing that probably will be drawing in both sexes. So right. it behooves you to be able to feel comfortable with yes. both. Yes, and I do. <clears throat> I mean, usually it's um, when I have summer interns here. It's usually young men 
mm-hmm. you know, that are here. So that does perfect. Hasn't Great. bothered me a bit. Good. And you've got you've got lots of experience doing that. So that's yeah, definitely, excellent. definitely. So good. Anyhow, and I I've thought about I've got a coffee maker over there, but going with the Kruger. No, is that the name? Yeah. No, Kruger. Whatever the yeah, whatever. individual uh-huh. things are, and. I know a um, couple of the ladies I've talked to that have Airbnb, they fix be- breakfast. And and I think you guys said at one of the meetings it's not a requirement unless you put it in there. Uh, so I was, I've got like a little protein bar or something, mm-hmm. you know, that they could have. Mm-hmm. Or to have pastry or something that mm-hmm. they could just, you know, something easy. Because if they're business folks going off to Intel, they would more than likely get breakfast there. Right, so that's definitely something to consider. You would, since you'd be sharing a kitchen, you would have kitchen privileges, right? And would you have laundry privileges as well? Yes, they could use the laundry. Excellent. If um, so you might want to just have a shelf in the refrigerator that's for your guests. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe have a cupboard if they wanted to put some dry goods in the right. in the cupboard. Um, give them a little, you know, tour of what's available to them and what isn't. Mm-hmm. Um, the laundry facilities. Have you had people use your 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 interns? With, yeah, and no problem with that. No problem. So what you might want to do as you go along, consider having a, a small fee for using the laundry facilities, just to kind of you know amortize your water expense, or just include that in the room rate. Uh huh. There's another. Okay. Point too. Yeah, because it's out in the garage, so... Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you didn't see my messy garage, so... <laughs> I don't need to. It's okay. <laughs> Bicycles, you've got a really nice neighborhood here. Um, is there a, a bike path around here? Farmington Road has a bike path okay. on it. There's a, a bike path, and it'll go all the way into Beaverton. But anyhow, I have a bike here with a helmet. Nice. I even have the pump because I've had it for probably... Oh, seven years or so now. <laughs> Rode it once. Uh-oh. <laughs> but it's in the garage. Uh-huh. Someday I'll pump the tire back up and dry it again. <laughs> but there's that part out there. People can go to the Mac station with their bikes and get on and go into Portland. Oh, you can even bikes put your bikes and... on the bus too, can't you? Yeah. 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 So, so anyhow, and people that like to ride that much have their own bikes. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things that you might do when you when you go live with your listing is look up your walkability score and your bike score okay. and post that on your listing so that people can see you know what they can do in your neighborhood. You'll want to do that anyway just so that you have certain landmarks um, that are listed that they can kind of scope out where they are like how, how long of a drive is it into to Pioneer Courthouse Square? Mm-hmm. Um, how long of a combination max uh, bus it would be to go there? Um, you know, little things like that. And then also for your direct, your immediate area here too. How far is the closest restaurant that you could walk to or ride mm-hmm. your bike to or drive to? It's, um, it's about two miles. So, okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, so it'd be a long walk. Yeah. Um, and then but if, if they like to walk, it would take right. um Well, probably most people will be driving, mm-hmm. so they'll want that information too. Right. See if they can park here. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just nice to know, to kind of vector where you are. Right, how true. Uh-huh. Yeah, so that's all stuff that's available online. And yes, uh-huh. And you can just kind of bullet it down your listing so that, you know, and not everybody's going to look at it. In fact... You know, we know that a lot of people don't even read the, all of the listing description, but if it's bulleted, it's easier for people to see. Mm-hmm. So, and we'll get to this when, when we actually write up your listing, but when you do your description, you want to keep it simple and um, and then use use bullets or hyphens or something to, to list out because it's easier for people to see. Right. It's not all glopped together yeah. in one paragraph yeah. or whatever. The more complicated you get, the more difficult it will be for, for people to read, and they won't mm-hmm. want to take the time. Right. And the other thing is, is to use captions in your in your photos. Have your photos speak to the people so they can see, okay, there's a bed. This is my bedroom. Well, now I want to know how big it is. Am right. I going to fit in that bed? Now, if I'm used to a king-size bed at home, 
I'm not sure that, I mean, I totally don't want a double bed. Right. You know, but a queen might be okay. You can't tell by looking at a bed right. what size it is. So you need to actually put that okay. on there. Queen size bed, 60 by whatever it is. So I don't know what the... Yeah, and you probably don't need to do the dimensions, but okay. you might want to say queen size bed, upscale linens. You know, if you've got 400 plus thread count, my kids give me a hard time because I have all these pillows. And I have four pillows in each room plus the decorator pillows are type good. thing. good. You know, so, because yeah. I like to be able to curl up in the pillows. Me too. And, stuff. and that's what makes a pretty bed. Yeah. And it's really important that you have a pretty bed. There are two things that you, that you really need to have in an Airbnb, and a comfortable bed is one of them. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that it needs to be clean. And your home is spotless. So oh, thank you. It looks wonderful. It does look very, very clean. I so, swept real quick before you got here. <laughs> and no pictures. I have no pictures, so I can't prove it. Well, I did. I had um, I had a company come out and clean the ducts and do a whole cleaning so that mm -hmm. going through the house, the dust should not even be seen wonderful. <laughs> anymore. You know? Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, so when you get to this, will you do your own cleaning or will you hire it out? I will still be doing my own cleaning. Okay. Yeah. So it's not that much. It's a great way to start mm -hmm. because you know exactly what's going on. You know what you need. You know how fast the towels need to be replenished or, you know, if you need to purchase more, if you don't have quite enough, if you need backup sets, you know, how your kitchen is being used, all of mm -hmm. that will be really important for you to get a really good handle yeah. on your business. Definitely. So, in fact, today, I this is one of my retirement presents, this That's pretty, pretty pitcher and, and yeah. bowl. And I, when I was in Italy, I got some uh, tablecloths that are linen and just hand embroidered and stuff. And I'm going, nope, can't use that one. <laughs> has to be a little more, you know. <laughs> well, and so that actually brings up another thought, too, is you'll mm -hmm. want to have some kind of a name for yourself. So some people will call their guest rooms by the color that they're painted or something else. Mm -hmm. So I suggest that you think of something fun and catchy. Okay. We'll have to so, figure that one yeah, out. Because <laughs> yeah. it's also blue. <laughs> So things to that that are pending are the bathroom, yes, and insurance, insurance. and bathroom insurance, and that's probably it. And that's and it. That's, and that's it. You know, right. I just I want to make sure that I have the insurance in place and that the bathroom is fixed and ready to go. Because mm -hmm. at this point, nobody's using that bathroom. Yeah, and um, of course the faucets off of it too. The faucet is where the leak is at oh, that yeah. has caused the water damage in the mm -hmm. living room. So I might even have new carpet. I don't know. Oh. But I'll have a new piece to the wall. Yeah. <laughs> well, so I'd like to do this with you again um, three to six months after you start your Airbnb. Okay. See where you are, how, what kinds of changes you've made, what okay. kind of issues you've come across. Okay. And do some, yeah. some more educating and... Be great, yes. Information gathering. Yeah, and um, I'm saying I'm hoping for September, mm -hmm. but then in October I'm doing a um, cross country trip with two other friends. Mm -hmm. We're driving, and um, stay in Airbnbs on your way. Yeah, expose yourself as much as you can to as many Airbnbs as you can to see how other people are doing it. Okay. You'll learn a lot. So with three ladies traveling together, mm -hmm. will that make it harder to get an Airbnb? You, you just, no, you just use, the, use your filters uh -huh. as you're looking for your spaces. So probably what the biggest issue will be is one night because a lot of people will have two night minimum. Right. And that's because, just because of the laundry and the work and turning over mm -hmm. a room every day. Um, so many of us will have two nights. So that probably won't be an issue um, if you're going to stay two nights. Right, right, right. But use your filters, and as you search in Airbnb, you'll see that you can filter by number of people, number of beds, um, whether or not there's a hot tub or just all kinds of stuff. You need If you want to be in somebody's house 
versus um, an entire unit. So mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Yeah. I know one of the things, being an Uber driver, I pick up a lot of people that are using Airbnbs. Yes. You know, and I always ask the question, how was your Airbnb or how is it, you know, and I'll get different responses. So, oh, interesting. Yeah. One uh, couple said, you know, the first time we used it, it was really great. You know, nice people, nice room. We just use it for sleeping in, basically. But this one that we had, it wasn't all that clean. Mm. So... So you know firsthand cleanliness is a huge issue. Yes, definitely. Yeah. In fact, I picked up early on in Ubering a couple that was staying at an Airbnb and there was mold in the refrigerator and they took pictures of it and moved to a hotel. Wow. Yeah. So I'm going, whoa. <laughs> you know? Isn't that interesting? Uh -huh. Whoa, what else? Um, that's basically it. You know, people that are using Airbnb in Portland, all they're doing is looking for a place to sleep, but they want it to be clean, mm -hmm. you know, so. And are the people that you pick up and deliver various places, are, are they more in, in Portland property or are they more in the outlying areas? They're more in the Portland, uh, southeast, northeast side. Okay. Um, where it's easy to get to stuff or there's, you know, close to friends. Um, Usually it's over, you know, not much past, I would say, 39th for, mm -hmm. for Airbnbs. So the southeast side of town. Mm -hmm. And, and when you drive, mm -hmm. do you stay within your area? Do you, uh, how, I go. Do you go out to the airport and mm -hmm. all over? Okay. I do, yeah. Okay. In fact, I always tell people it's where the app takes me. So I'll, I'll start off, and I'll, if I leave from home... I will turn on the app. I will get somebody here or in Beaverton, or I can be in Beaverton, have to come back out this way, mm -hmm. you know, to pick somebody up. But I always, you know, wherever the app might take me. In fact, I was at um, a fundraiser last night in Southeast Portland. And after I was done, I turned on the app, went, made a couple of turns around downtown Portland started heading home and when I got just past 217 or Cedar Hills Boulevard on 26, I got pinged. Took the lady up, took her back into Portland, oh, had another rider. So started, um, got, uh, picked up a gentleman that was going to garden home and took him and I thought, oh, I'll just go home and start, you know, getting mm -hmm. stuff done. So, so Ubering, is that a fairly lucrative thing for you to do? It is. I mean, I work part time, mm -hmm. usually no more than twenty hours a week, and mm -hmm. make up to three hundred dollars. You know. Wow. And you extra. use your own car. Use my own car. How does your insurance work with that? Uh, Uber has uh, supplemental insurance. Uh -huh. Also, if you have somebody in your car and you're in an accident, they pay for it. Um, but I had another friend approach me that has. Um, has a business and the Beaverton, Tiger, Hillsborough, Portland school districts have a program. So I have to call and see about getting um, commercial insurance because they have a program where they'll pick kids up from one area and take them to a different school district oh. so they can go to the school district of their choice. Mm -hmm. And you pick them up in the morning, take them to school, pick them up in the afternoon t at school and take them home. And, and I think it's something like you get 60 or $70 a day for doing that. Wow. So, so anyhow, I have to call insurance and find out because I know my mm -hmm. company won't do that. Mm -hmm. It'd have to be more commercial mm -hmm. doing that. So then it'd be a, a better insurance policy all around yeah. for doing that. Well, I know Uber is part of the sharing economy too. And yes. so it just makes sense that Uber and Airbnb would would blend nicely with each other mm -hmm. in one person. Right. <laughs> so that'll be another thing I'll want to follow up on to see how that how that actually does work. Yeah. For you. Somebody goes, Oh, you could just put in there, you know, and I can pick you up at the airport yeah. as an Uber and yeah. <laughs> take you up. <laughs> but, right. Um I don't Uber wouldn't go for that because they have a um you go in to a line of people mm -hmm. and then 
it's you know first in first out type right, situation right. so that wouldn't work at the airport yeah. but um, if somebody were at my house I could turn on my app they could request an Uber driver and it would, I would then be able to take them someplace yeah. you know so um, so yeah yeah well, <laughs> all kinds of different things you well know. thank you very much for this this was really great oh thank lots you lots of good information yeah um It'll be fun to get it started. And yeah, stuff and yeah. See how Are you looking goes. forward to it? I am, yeah. And now that, you know, just doing one room, mm-hmm. where I don't have to worry about that second room mm-hmm. just yet, it'll give me more time to figure out where to put all this stuff. Yeah. You know. So, anyhow. So, are there I'm, any questions that you want to ask? No, I don't think so. I think we've got it covered. Okay. And I know you're available just to text right. or email away right. or a phone call. Is there anything else that you want people to know about what you're doing? Not that I can think of right now. Okay. It's just kind of a new venture. Yeah. Just, you know, I, I love working with people and talking to people. So it's yeah, just natural to do. <laughs> Good. Great. All right. Thanks so much. All right. Thanks, Debbie. As you can tell, there's a lot of things to consider when you're starting an Airbnb. This was fun to do with Anne, and as we talked about the um, home itself and the amenities that she offered, it's also really important to consider the more basic issues like insurance and parking and how people are going to get around, and, and the location is really critical as well. If you're considering doing this, it's, it's important to to think about yourself as a guest. How are you going to use the space? Where are you going to go? What are you going to do? Where are you going to eat? Where's the local grocery store? I mean, it's just like almost like moving into a new neighborhood. How is that neighborhood going to suit you? The guest that comes to you are coming not for your home. They're coming for the area and what they can do there. There's something else that's driving them. It is important to have a bed and it is important to be comfortable, but they're not buying your home. So keep that in mind and do the best that you can do to make them comfortable and help to facilitate their activities and their behavior while they're there. The first thing that you should do before you open up an Airbnb or you rent your home on VRBO or in any any of the other platforms is make sure that you're legal. So you want to check with your community authorities and find out if you need to be permitted, um, if you need to uh, have tax, pay taxes, the occupancy taxes, and uh, if your HOAs will allow you to have a short-term rental. I know of people who've been looking to purchase homes, and the last thing that you would want to do is have a mortgage and then find out that you can't rent the way you want to. So there are a lot of things to consider, and if you have any questions for me, I would be more than happy to answer them. My email address is debbie at hostingyourhome.com and you can always send a, send me a note from our website, which is hostingyourhome.com. You can find the podcast at iTunes or on Stitcher or Google Play and we would love to hear from you. You can find our podcast on iTunes and Stitcher and Google Play. We'd love for you to subscribe. And when you do subscribe, Rob will send you a newsletter that will give you a quick advertisement of our latest podcast and anything special that we have going on. Take care. Thanks a lot for listening. And we'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye.